I want to start off with, with Hayes, uh, please thank the governor um, for his uh, movement towards uh, trying to really diversify uh, Virginia with renewables. I know he's a big uh, proponent for um, solar and uh, renewables, and especially uh, with your presentation uh, discussing energy efficiency, because that really is going to be our uh, quickest and best ways of utilizing what we have without wasting so much, since about half the energy we make, we actually waste. So that's really the step in, in the right direction, uh, because really, uh, you know, 8 percent of the mix is way, way low, so we definitely need to move in that direction. Um, and looking forward to, because um, I noticed that it was uh, tabled till next year for the uh, uh, Consortium Authority for Energy Storage, uh, which really we need to move in that direction because that's really part of the big, uh, big part of the solution uh, of using solar and wind as well. So I'm um, very happy to hear that. Um, as it goes towards the um, other uh, short comments, I'll try to keep it short. Um, uh, Forbes, as well as uh, many other news media uh, sources just the other day uh, did a Gallup poll and the Gallup poll basically showed that for the first time um, Americans are uh, uh, largely opposed to nuclear energy and its expansion, its use, um, of up to 54% uh, now uh, from last year's 43% um, from a t 2010 where it was 62%. Um, basically um, its cost Cost is a big reason, um, but at the same time, maybe it has something to do with uh, the current issues, like Indian Point is leaking large amounts of radioactive tritium. Um, Turkey Point in Florida is leaking large amounts of radioactive tritium. And still, we haven't heard yet um, how badly, or if they found out, um, um, if they fixed the leak at North Anna for its leaking, ongoing leaking tritium uh, problem as well. Um, or maybe it's the nuclear waste problem that the public is becoming fully aware of, of the problem of trying to store uh, radioactive, highly radioactive waste for thousands of years, and the security issues, and all the other issues that come up with nuclear waste. It is a huge problem. Or maybe two days ago, terrorist attack in Belgium has also maybe starting to raise some red flags here. Security issues, folks. Um, you know, they're on high security alert at the uh, two nuclear facilities in Belgium because about a month or so prior to that, they found uh, some investigations where they actually found footage from the terrorist um, uh, from the terrorist attack in um, France. They found some footage where they actually had surveillance of a high official nuclear power. Um, plant um, uh, employee or director uh, from one of the Belgian facilities. So uh, security. So while we're talking about the cost of not only the construction, the cost of waste storage, which still is not an accounting for really, when you really, well, how, how are we going to know the cost for storing waste for a thousand years? But on, on, on the heels of all that, the NRC came up on their um, latest report saying that, um, and it's for public comment, that they're actually proposing regulations to lessen the fees for licensing, inspection, special projects, annual fees, um, applications for license, uh, basically because of their budgets being cut. And so basically if this proposed rule goes through, you know, they're willing to take a, let's see, what was it? That they will take a $2 an hour a cost cut. Um, let's see, what was that? From 200 and... 57. From $268 an hour to $266 an hour. Um, look, right now we need more security uh, when it comes to the issue of the cast themselves, Dominion, of course, Mr. Christian has left the room, um, but uh, we are part of the uh, project to uh, store high burnout fuel. So uh, we don't really know how well these casks are going to 
survive and last and behave for many years, so that's going to be a problem. Um, and really, um, my question also would be, you know, who owns the research facility in Bedford that's been so much of so much discussion? Who owns that? Because I believe it's owned by a nonprofit. Okay, it got nonprofit. transferred over but to a nonprofit. Always, always it's been. always. Oh, you're talking about the. Are you talking about the, the, talking about the steam loop? I think it's something that B and W owned before. They still own that. Okay. The so steam, there's a steam loop that was built that they own. It's in a building that's owned by a nonprofit research organization. Okay, that's what I, I thought. Yeah. Well, you know, it would be really good if Virginia's going to do anything with all this development uh, in nuclear anything. Any, anything if so far uh, the dry cask, uh, especially in the new homes, the newer ones, um, we don't have the technology needed to be able to monitor for cracks even. Um, or how about also um, how to deal with radioactive tritium that we don't know how to actually, and that's what's causing the problem in Fukushima because they can't, um, they, can't, uh, they can't come up with the technology to remove radioactive tritium from the water. So that's, I mean, there are definitely areas of research and development need to go forward to protect us from what's already been developed and the waste that's already been left to our future generations. So I think that's the, that's the direction we need to go in. And as it goes for the 80-year license, it's 60 to 80, uh, I am following the goal. And the, um, the basis of that is they still need to do research because even the capsules that they drop down um, in the re near the reactor uh, vessel itself, many of the reactors no longer have these little capsules that actually contain the metal of the vessel itself to, to look for embrittlement and for um, uh, corrosion and cracking. So we, there, there needs to be even development of tools to even be able to see how long these vessels will be, be able to be used. And then also another thing I wanted to mention is the, um, you know, recently the other day I was on a meeting for the relicensing of North, An uh, North Anna's independent spent fuel installation where they store the, um, the, the cask of the dry fuel, uh, the used fuel um, on a pad. Uh, basically, in the renewal, they only want to have to lift up one canister of the 27 that are there to look under the bottom and to inspect it. And they want to do that once every 20 years. Well, those things have already been on the pad for a couple of decades. 16 years. Thank you. So they lifted up one canister for this upcoming renewal where they slid a sled under it, lifted up 10 inches, and took pictures and whatnot with a camera. Well, in the fall, there was a meeting with the NRC, and experts there said Dominion should use a special camera, an industrial camera. What does Dominion use? A GoPro camera. Come on, folks. We're going to lift up one canister in 20 years, we're going to use a GoPro and say, hey, it looks good. This is not sufficient evaluation or inspection, and we're going to end up with an accident if we don't really pay attention. Because what Fukushima taught us is what everything everybody thought couldn't happen did, and it was multiple failures, not just one. So we need, in Virginia, and this this uh, group, the authority, uh, really needs to look at, uh, we've got two nuclear power stations here, they're aging, uh, we've got more spent fuel being made, um, ultimately we're going to have to look at decommissioning and waste storage, so really let's focus on how can we have the best storage cask, how can they be monitored, how can we even fix the leak at, at North Anna that's going on right now? And as it goes for new nuclear power stations in Virginia, North Anna 3 is built on a fault line. You, it's documented. The geologist from Williams and Mary shows the fault, ancient fault mine. You run right out under reactor 1 and 2. We're asking for it. We don't need another nuclear power plant there, a reactor, and we're not going to put one down in Surrey because the land's actually sinking and the tides are rising. So it's not going to happen. And I'll finish off with basically, as it goes for a FOIA request, I would like to start with Don that I'd like a FOIA request for the communications of what 
uh, our government has been asking you for, since you said none of the public's asked for any um, requests. That's my request, is I'd like to know that, <coughs> and the issue of um, our legislators that are supporting um, uh, some of this, uh, which I can't quite read here. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to know what the communications were there for my FOIA request to start with. And thank you. I understand the first request, and these are things that they asked us for, like how much money do we spend and stuff like that. That's a matter of public record. That's easy for us to give it. What is your second question? The the issue where um, was this uh, the funding by Virginia legislators? This legislative support. I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to see what the oh the uh, national assets legislation. I that has nothing to do with the Virginia because the consumer no, authority so it's not subject to your FOIA request. I'm going to get care back up. Oh, the the budget item. I believe that you're talking, you're talking about his budget and stuff. So I'm talking about in the presentation. Evidently, how, this legislative support. Where where are these legislators support are coming from? Are you talking from? about in my presentation? No, I'm talking about with Marshall's. With Marshall's. Yeah. Well, that's BNEC. That's that is not That's BNEC. the consortium, and it is that's not subject to your FOIA request. This is not subject to FOIA. Okay, so in other words, he made the presentation, and you have privy to his pre presentation, so do I, but so the information he gives you, I can't get from you. Is that what you're saying, or what? I'm, I'm the information we got is the same information. We have the same information. All we have is that right. presentation as well. Right, so the, so the Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium is an entity that is not a public entity. It's a group of members, and they, Marshall is the executive director, and he came here today to provide an update of what it is that they are doing. And everybody had the same update at the same time. My interpretation is anything the consortium does within the consortium is not subject to FOIA. It's but anything the, the consortium gives to us as the authority is subject to FOIA. And we, we don't have anything that you don't have. We only get the same presentation you get every quarter update. Okay, well then I guess I'll just go back for the initial request of you said that the government has asked. Yeah, I'll give you the, there are, there are just two things that come to us that are administrative issues like, have you spent any money? Well, we have no funding for the authority, so obviously our answer is no. We'll get you a copy of that. And the second one is, are you still structured under the auspices of this? It's a simple questionnaire that we just fill out. Happy to give that to you. It's on the government's record. It's a re thing they ask every government entity. They're not asking for us anything that they're not asking for the authority on wind, the authority on solar. We're, those are just the only okay, two well, I, didn't, oh, I, I have no idea what they're asking, totally but you I'm mentioned happy. that you were asked by the government for things, so well, I'm, I'm asking for I'm what, what they've to, asked for. Sure. No more. I'm happy to give them to you. We, we'll make sure we give those to you. There's two every year they ask us for. Very straightforward. Okay. Very simple. Any other comments or questions? Any other public comments? Very well. Do we have um, a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Any any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very well. We're adjourned. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for allowing.